So, hello, everybody. Um, this is Sophie from Yellow Hermes uh, presenting our nice developer portal together with Emmanuel, who is uh, working together with me on this. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, this is our portal. The idea behind it is that we have been promoting APIs to our customers and partners for quite a while, since like 2007, we did our first uh, ones and so on. And uh, we found that we spend a lot of time to re-explain the same things to our customers. And so it was quite obvious that we wanted something to give more self-service capabilities to our partners and customers to connect to our APIs. Also knowing that the demand to do so was really growing year on year and permanently and still is. And I think that's a good thing because we're all here for APIs. What we created here and what we can show you today is still sort of in an earlier stage. Uh, we, we built the, the main features that we wanted. We still want to enrich it with more content, with more and improved uh, functional documentation and also technical documentation to make this a constant improvement and, and make it even more valuable. And um, I was starting to speak about um, customers and partners, which were our main audience for this portal. However, we found that also our internal teams uh, work a lot of but with external resources coming in for projects and effectively working with these same APIs in the same way as an external project would do. And we said to ourselves, we want this also to be available for our internal documentation proposals. And to um, ensure that we have created a double login feature actually. So you can log in as a Eurohermes customer or you can log in as a Eurohermes employee, which would then go with an SSO connection to your, your corporate login and, and would get you started right away. I will demo this, however, as a customer. So what we have is then the general terms and conditions need to be accepted. Um, that was for us, um, from a legal standpoint, a very important part so that we make sure every person or entity using our APIs, my demo user that I was just about to use, is not yet fully authorized. So what I can do now is to request an actual user access. Um, you may wonder why, why could she log in? and now needs access. Well, that is actually um, because we have a role-based access model in this developer portal. So my user is working properly, my password is fine, but I'm not yet authorized on, on our portal to see the actual content. So Emmanuel would, um, can, can do this in the admin screen, so as a, as a user, I can um, say, um, I can select where I am from, such so a And then I could now indicate my company name because we are in a B2B business. So we're not selling to individuals. So we would need to indicate the company identification ID. Well, we could have the German Handelsregister number as our APIs mainly are support to actual financial products that we sell. So we are in the insurance business. Uh, as a customer, I can select that I am using the credit insurance um, product of Euler Hermes, and I would like to use the APIs to integrate that credit insurance product into my own process, maybe in my ERP system. And that's why I'm here. And I would like to get an access to test or production. I can indicate it here. And now we have a manual validation step, which is uh, today necessary um, because we, as we create a new account, we really need to be sure that this is me as a customer and not something 
else um, trying to impersonate me. So thanks for Emmanuel, you just validated my um, access in the background while I was presenting. That's um, very fast. And you see as a result, I now have on my account the possibility to generate a test API key. That's what I can do here. Um, that is also directly linked with our IDP, our central one. Um, and But more than that, I can also access the API catalog, of course, to, to browse the full documentation of our APIs. And uh, you see the list is still not huge. I mean, we're adding um, APIs as they come. We have also implemented categories according to our different product types. What do we have? So we have mainly an insurance business, but we also do collection services and guarantees, which need to be added soon, I guess. And then we will find the APIs that correspond to these services. Um, now, having said that, um, you can, of course, go directly to the API catalog to have the individual APIs ready. However, um, we thought that this is not sufficient because um, typically the developers of our customers are not necessarily experts in the credit insurance business. Why should they? I mean, if they are IT developers. So um, we wanted to have packaged APIs or API packages, if you will, to, to make that easier to, to understand how that works and, and select the APIs that you really need for your product. So we implemented this API products catalog on, and then it says, if you want to implement APIs for credit insurance, you can go to the product detail page. And then we would have a functional documentation, first of all, to explain you how does this work? How need how you need to orchestrate our different APIs to make this useful? And this is what we try to explain here. And I think I said in the beginning that we still need to work on the content to make this better with more pictures and have it really self-explanatory. Um, this is yet at an early stage. Um, However, then once you have uh, read the functional documentation, it gives you then the list of those APIs that you should use for this business use case. If you want to work on the, the on this product of credit insurance, this, these are the APIs that you should implement. Um, there's of course a getting started section. I mean, um, there's of course a, a, a page that gives you the first step and explains uh, how this uh, generally works. And then once you have the, the API selected that you want to work on, let's take the component search. Of course, there's then a typical um, explanation on this uh, unitary API, uh, functional documentation. And then we have the API reference documentation that you need, of course, to understand the open, open API specs. Um, of course, we have release notes then. Um, then there's a contact section, of course, where you can be in touch. Now, contact is special in that we have a centralized team of API experts working um, as a second level support to, uh, to work with our customers. So if you don't um, succeed in self-serving entirely, that's not a problem, you can just drop a message to our team and you will have a direct contact. Um, maybe one, one more technical feature is also interesting. Um, as we don't use uh, one of the standard API management platforms, uh, we have built our platform more or less ourselves. So we are partly using Amazon services and then we have security added and this uh, and our own IDP, of course. And we also have included it into our own CICD chain. So all the documentation that I've just um, shown you here, um, you can actually push this in the automatic deployment process. So when, the, when you have a new version of your API, 
uh, you deploy it, then you make sure that you also deploy the new documentation of that version, including the ref, um, the, the release notes, and um, also a sandbox. We, we are building this currently. It is not yet complete, but we will also have it integrated so that you can have uh, an environment that, where you can just go play with our APIs. And uh, Emmanuel? Hello, I'm uh, Emmanuel. I'm working as uh, the product owner for our developer portal in your RMS. And I wanted to add uh, to, uh, to show you two additional features on our portal. The first one is the uh, ability for, for our customers to see some of our, uh, to be able to test directly our API uh, with uh, an integrated Postman collection, uh, which is in, uh, directly integrated in the uh, reference documentation. Here, for example, for our single buyer collection API, you can both uh, download the uh, Postman specification as the uh, Swagger specification, as well as run the uh, the collection in Postman. You just click a button, choose if you want to go through Postman Web or for uh, for Postman for your integrated system, and the new collection exactly will be uh, will be added with all the uh, all the different uh, calls so that the uh, a developer can both see which calls are available what api are available and uh, can uh, even start to generate an endpoint based on those uh, based on those uh, test collections Another uh, interesting feature is the ability for the product owners as well as the developers of our, our API to directly publish the APIs as well as their functional doc documentation and release notes uh, to the portal. With command line, I can just uh, add the, a swagger directly to, uh, to, this, uh, to this content. Uh, through calling an API, and the uh, and then the administrator of the portal can check the uh, the new API and uh, add add or edit any new content, uh, as well as uh, check that the release notes are up to date, uh, as well as the functional documentation. That's all. So I think that gives a first um, big picture of what our developer portal does. And uh, I hope you liked it. And I hope there will be a couple of questions uh, that we will be happy to answer. Thank you. Hello, everybody. So thank you for the presentation also to Emmanuel. <laughs> So you were mentioning in the the demo that um, at this stage you have the the immediately necessary functionality, and now you're going to double down on content. And I assume that this content requires a very unique set of knowledge, both from trade credit insurance and the API world. Who writes the content? Um, yeah, that's exactly one of the tricky points, I would say. Um, we have um, federated our entire API approach. That means we have individual squads. They are completely owning their relative API. And so they need to organize the design, the development, and the documentation of their APIs. And then we go through a governance team to try to harmonize still so that it's um, consistent between the, the different APIs. Um, but right now the challenge is um, for our governance team to work with each API squad and remind them that it's great to have APIs in production, but it's even greater to have them published on the portal with a full-fledged documentation. Um, yeah, and it takes a little time because it needs to be prioritized in the backlog and and everything. Mm -hmm. Do you have plans on doing different languages? Not today. Um, we see that um, yeah, we are in a very international 
business, we typically don't face problems with speaking English. Mm -hmm. um, at least for the for the couple of APIs that we mainly need for, for our core business, uh, we have not uh, heard of such a need from our customers. And I admit it would also be pretty difficult to, to put this into place because we would really need to a bit re review our architecture of the portal and then have additional people to translate and, and to test that translated content and so on. So it's um, something we would do if we absolutely need to, but we're happy if it works uh, in English only. Mm -hmm. How do developers get notified of uh, the newly available APIs? Um, that's currently still a manual process. So, I mean, we have this expert team, we call them the API consultants. They basically have a one-on-one -on -one contact with most of our customers and partners. Um, there's very rarely the case where you have a full um, self-service today, even if we believe this will grow. And so today we would inform them by email. In a future version, we would uh, hope to um, develop push notifications either to the emails that we have collected when they sign up and then we could have um, various user groups for for specific interests maybe a credit insurance user group and a surety user group just to give an example but this is yet to be developed mm -hmm. You also mentioned that uh, you're going to work on a sandbox. Um, what are your expectations from the sandbox? What will it change for the users? Yeah, the sandbox itself is live. Um, so we have uh, developed um, automatic scripts that would take a Postman collection and automatically convert it into a sandbox mm -hmm. that can then be deployed. Uh, and then again, the challenge is a bit similar to the documentation challenge because you need to fill the sandbox with data that makes sense. And especially if um, you need to orchestrate two, three APIs for a typical business use case, you need to make sure that the dummy data of the sandbox is consistent between these mm -hmm. so that a developer can really play um, with the set of APIs and come to uh, a good uh, good return. Uh, I would... And, and um, that's currently ongoing. That's what we mean is being developed. It's mainly uh, designing from a business business perspective the, the use cases. And the thing is that these use cases appear to be um, straightforward, but in reality, in the credit insurance business, you have a very high number of potential cases of insurance cover that you can have depending on various criteria. And so we want to really cover them all because only then we can make sure that the, the sandbox is really giving a, a real life look and feel, uh, which is helpful for our developers. Mm -hmm. And then you also have to harmonize among the different squads that are responsible for mm -hmm. the APIs once these APIs are packaged, right? Yeah, correct. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, in the meanwhile, um, there's also technical questions in the chat and Emmanuel is answering um, some. Mm -hmm. um, so thank you very much.